Hello, this is Adam from Pinheads Pinball, and I've got a 6 and 6 power supply on the bench right now. It's actually been just pulled out of a firepower game, and I think I'm having issues with the 5 volt su supply. So we're going to do some testing and see. Alright, so where we're at in the schematic now is uh, here's our 5 volt circuit. Uh, it takes a little over 9 volts AC in through this connector here. There's a uh, two input voltages here for hot and neutral and then we have the center tap which is ground. And these are fed through these two MR501 diodes, rectifier diodes, uh, filter cap C15 and uh, F5, a 4 amp rated fuse. And the schematic tells us that we should have uh, in between 13 and 14 volts when F5 is totally open and uh, about 12 volts under normal load. So I'm going to pull the fuse out. That's F5. can show you on schematic here. Here we are, F5. Okay. So I've pulled F5 out. Now I've made a little test tool here for the um, system 6 power supply and all I have to do here is just plug it in this connector and I've got all my input voltages labeled. Now I've got a variable AC supply on the bench which makes this pretty easy. I realize um, that's not a real common piece of equipment. It's a BKA Precision 1655 AC power supply. It's You can fetch one on eBay for I don't know a couple hundred bucks but they're really helpful for testing power supplies. So green is going to ground. Those fit together. Hot and neutral. Okay. So I'm going to check my AC voltage in. Power on. Dial it in. Okay, so I'm about nine and a half VAC in. Okay, so let's check the fuse and see what kind of voltage we've got there. Grab a ground. Sure, it's a good ground. Measure my DC voltage. Interesting. Only one volt. Less than that, three quarters of a volt. Ground's good. Not quite getting the AC voltage on the board that I should. No, I'm getting it at the connector. I don't seem to be getting it on the board. So I'm just going to put in a new power connector. The filter cap is still in circuit. Hmm. Let's measure that filter cap real quick. Well, this thing's this filter cap is original. Well, let's replace that while we're at it. Twelve thousand mic. Let's see, twelve thousand mic, sixteen volt or higher. I got twelve thousand mic, twenty five volt. So I think I'm just going to rebuild the entire 5 volt section. Okay, so we're going to pull out 
these diodes. Try to desolder those. Let's see if it was good enough. If I just gotta cut the leads. Holes look okay. Okay. Let's go ahead and pull the cap out. So when dealing with electrolytic capacitors, which these are, it's very important to make sure you get the right orientation. So these older ones, the positive side of the cap has an indent, and that's really it. You only see some negative markings here indicating that this is the negative end. Newer um, caps, you'll end up with not only the indent, but also a line pointing to the negative terminal cap. Some strain relief on the solder connections. The new cap is a little bit narrower, shorter than the old one, so those supports barely fit. Okay, let's make sure we got good lead length on the underside. It's fine. Out of that in place. Double check positive flowing to the negative. Good. Okay. Double check my positive flowing. The negative. Good. Okay. Next, the diodes. They're also marked. Cathode and the anode. Make sure we put those in the correct way, also. silk screening on the board to show which end is the cathode and which is the anode. Okay, those are in. Solder them up. If I end up with some dirty pads, they're keeping the solder from flowing well. Touch them up a bit. So they shine. That solder will typically flow a lot better. Cap. A little hard.
hard for you to see those solder joints, but all right. Big leads, big clippers. Okay, double check the orientation of the dials is correct. Okay, so you got a new cap new diodes now we're going to replace the input connector if I'm fortunate the desolder job was good enough this guy should just pull out maybe with a little bit of help flathead Actually, this is a chip lifting tool. Very handy. Okay. That came up fine. I mean, those pins are a little dirty. Don't see any breaks. So, if we replace this, we really should replace the connector also at the power supply. Pin 1 is there, which is indicated by the one pin that's not like the other socket instead of a pin. Goes there. This can be a little bit of a pain to hold in place. Different techniques for doing that. I just hold it in place by pins other than the one I'm heating. And just get enough solder to hold it in place on a couple that are opposite each other. Check it and make sure. Got everything flush. Yeah, it looks okay. And just solder the rest up. And as with all soldering, you don't want to just heat the pin. You want to heat the pin and the pad. Make sure solder flows all the way around. Real easy to get a cold solder joint. If you just heat the pin, not the pad, throw a bunch of solder on there. Okay. Looking good. Okay, so what have we done? We've installed a new power connector input, started installed new rectifier diodes, and we've install, installed a new filter cap facing the correct way, plus to minus, diode bar, good. We're going to throw it back in the game and see if that fixed our problem. Plus this new power input connector here, so remember whenever you replace header pins you always want to replace the connector. Okay, so we uh, put that board back in the game and I'm happy to report that it did work. So again, we replaced the 5 volt filter cap, we replaced the two rectifier diodes, and we also replaced uh, the input. The input from the secondary winding the transformer with most of the AC voltages. We replaced those four things, put it in the game, and no longer getting resets with uh, flipper flips. So thanks uh, for watching, I uh, hope it was interesting, and have fun repairing pinball, and don't hurt yourself.